Well guys, I think this is the longest hiatus I've taken and I'm really sorry about that. I've had to get a few things in my personal life together and now that I have done so, another Dragon review was my priority. Now that's life, isn't it? You decide if you're going to let setbacks get you down and keep you down or you fight and build back up better than ever. So I prefer the second and since this is, this is the first I've done in a long time, I wanted to do something special. So let's skip ahead to Series 7 specifically the Hydra, a multi-headed dragon. Now at some point if you really love dragons, you're going to think about getting a multi-headed representative. Maybe you are exposed to one on your constant hunt for dragons to purchase. Perhaps you're into mythology and know of the Hydra, uh, which battled Heracles, or the hundred-headed dragon Ladon, I think it's called Ladon, that guarded the Garden of the Hesperides. In my case, I was into Dungeons and Dragons, and came across the five-headed queen of evil dragons called Tiamat. So when I learned that the McFarlane line had in fact produced one, I quickly looked it up. This is the Series 7 Deluxe Dragon, and let me be blunt, I don't like it. The most obvious thing about it is the head on the right in this picture. The, head, uh, the neck comes off straight off the shoulder, as if it were an afterthought just grafted on, like a VV section gone wrong or done very badly. There is something very unnatural and Frankensteinish about the angle, and in fact, it reminds me of... So the other thing is the very lazy posture of the dragon. It's sprawled into a sphinx-like pose, which wouldn't be bad for a dragon in repose, except that it just doesn't go with the ferocity displayed by the dragon heads. So it is really clear to me that the mold was made in order to fit into a rectangular box, and having a third head that didn't spread out and legs that didn't stand up was the cost-saving way to do it. So this is an unsatisfying rendition of a multi-head I just won't be spending sing dollars, $200 on. So as my best friend Carl would say, what to do? And this time I have a ready answer. What you do is you simply go out and get another dragon. So check this out. Now this, this is a multi-headed dragon in all its glory. Uh, wingtip to wingtip, it's about 15 inches wide. From base to the highest point on this left wing, it's about 11 and a half inches. And from the tip of the most forward projecting head to the back, it's about 9 inches deep. So um, that's really the type of space that you really want to have if you want to get this dragon. Uh, not just that, but it's made of designer resin, so it's hefty. It's about 2.8 kilos, or I think that's about 6 pounds, so the shelf must be sturdy enough for it. Uh, for size comparison, here's the Series 1 Sorcerer Dragon, right next to it. And we also have the Series 3 Water Dragon. So you can see that um, height-wise, it's quite a lot taller than your typical McFarlane dragons, and it's a lot bulkier as well. Now, the detailing on this thing is just insane. Just gonna do a quick swivel around for you to have a look at the overall idea. Now, like I said, the detailing on this thing is incredible. I'm a big fan of the McFarlane dragons, and I still think they have some of the best dragons out there. But when you look at this thing, details spring out everywhere, and it's hard to know even where to begin. The overall paint job, including the base, uses metallic paint. And, um, well, basically this means that some people won't think it looks very natural. But it does mean you get all kinds of interesting hues and reflections. We'll start at the base. So, like I said, let's start at the base. Now, this base the, the just screams deep forest habitat to me. The dragon is standing with a foot on a rocky outcrop and another on a thick, twisted tree stump. Here you can see the great detailing of the tree trunk alone. Uh, you see earth, you see a mossy carpet, you see a root system, all right, a root system. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. See a root system. And you also see vines and creepers that have started to parasitize the dead, uh, or rather I, I would imagine dying tree stump. And 
Here's the bark detailing. Here's the detailing on the bark. And what you see is a split in the bark exposing younger wood beneath. There are clusters of barnacles as well, uh, which you know you don't just find on the keels of pirate ships. You find uh, you, you find almost everywhere. Uh, can be on on rock. They can be on tree tr uh, on, on on tree trunks. So that's really really amazing detail. I really like it. Um, the multicolored hues are provided by applying different shades and depths of metallic browns, uh, bronzes, yellows. Uh, a little bit of gold and copper and it's done so well that metallic as it might be you can very clearly get an organic sense of the entire base. The metallic sheen of the paint does pose a challenge on making the whole piece look natural but I think the artist has done a really really smashing job. If you look to the back for example here is very clearly a bedding of fresh moss. I'm sorry the color doesn't really come up on the camcorder uh, but trust me it's there. And I like particularly how the root system, the root system envelops uh, different parts of the of the rocky base, so it brings everything all together, you know, in a sort of very very cohesive, very planned kind of way. Now the dragon itself, you know, the advantage of a one piece sculpture like this, as opposed to you know something you really have to fit into a square or rather rectangular shape box, they can then sell in bulk in the retail stores. Um, you have no such limitations. So, you know, in this case, you have a spectacular creature with no restraint in pose whatsoever. Uh, five heads writhe and contort in different directions, all probably screaming for blood. And the joints, the joints where these, neck, uh, these separate necks connect, Wow, you look at that. That's the connection, and uh, the, the, the place where all five necks anchor. And it's thick, it's really muscular, and it really looks natural. There is no grafted look in any of these. Uh, both wings are spread out fully. Not Again, not constrained by having to fit in any box. And, you know, you look at these wings and they're heavily muscled and strong all right there is no there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that these wings could provide the necessary lift for this monster and the massive tail is coiled i think in sympathy okay in sympathy of the overall feel of tension and contraction in the musculature of this animal and no lazy feet here you see all four limbs are spread out they are dynamic and loaded, ready for action. In fact, this creature looks as likely to launch into flight as it is to launch right at you. I would say the metallic paint makes it a challenge to convey an organic natural look, but because of the way it is applied and the details are so non-uniform, you don't really need to stretch the imagination at all. There is still plenty of texture to this animal. Let's come in again, and I want to look, show you the very leathery look of these wings. Okay, the wing membranes are textured nicely and you can see they are really really well brought out because of a mix of hues uh, of greens, of turquoise, of yellows and I like especially how the scaly bits here really just transition to these membranous uh, structures. So you know, it looks the way I would expect um, a real-life animal to look. You know, it's not blocked off uh, like a, one texture in patchwork here, another one there. No, there is a lot of transition. Look at that, the, the, the folds of skin here, for instance. And of course, a whole, uh, whole bunch of horns, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just really, really delighted by this. Um, let's focus in on the on the heads now, okay? The heads are of course a focal point in any dragon and basically what you get here are five different heads. They actually look pretty similar to me and I'm not sure if they are all basically just replicas of one another and just later on just welded on to different, uh, different points. And you know what? I really don't care, you know, because the neck, uh, the, the necks are all well spread out. They're all 
arriving in their own independent directions that you really do not notice even if all the heads are exact replicas. And hey, you know, it makes sense, right? Uh, they prob they, they're on the same animal, they're all the same genetic material. So it's like quintuplets, you know, think of them as quintuplets. Um, again, the, the, the fact that the scales are really, really detailed and non-uniform in terms of shape, in terms of size, and you know, I'd even say in terms of type, uh, look here, all right, the, the very texture on the neck, and then we go down to um, the belly, the underbelly of the animal is a different type of scaling structure, and yet still a different type of scheme on the knees of the animal. So again, you know, um, the limitations, because the pain is metallic, uh, to making this creature look unnatural, really, really seems in my mind to be highly nullified by the fact that, you know, this, the, the, the sculpting, uh, the, the application of different colors, you know, just really, really makes this creature come alive in my mind. So, um, I guess really the next question you'd be asking is, where do I get one? I got this at a shop in Singapore called Myths and Legends. And because the, the owner refused to tell me where he got it, I did some research on the internet though. And there is a shop called um, it's called designtoscano.com. I'm going to put URL in the description below. And what what, is, what, what I found is something very similar. I, I mean, it's almost exact. And the only thing is that the paint job is different. Mine's got metallic paint throughout. And what you'll see on the URL below is that it's painted in more naturalistic colors. The piece itself is called Lysander, the five-headed dragon. So that's what I'm going to call this guy. And the artist is a lady called, I think, um, yeah, Gabriella Veronese. The, based on the dimensions, they're about the same, 15 inches wide, nine inches deep, 12 inches high. Again, like I said, the coloring is different and I've seen different resellers offering different versions. I've seen a four bronze version, which is very nice. And it's very likely that my figure has been through an intermediary workshop uh, undergone perhaps customized paint work and then got exported to Singapore for sale. So overall, I think uh, this is an incredible dragon. I'm very glad the McFarlane dragon proved to be such a letdown because it prompted me to do some hunting, investigate other avenues, and then I find this awesome looking beast. It's really one of the most incredible pieces I own and it's going to occupy a space on my desk for a long time to come. So, you know, um, Wow, this is just another proud acquisition of mine, I have to say. Really amazing. So um, look, even if you get it from designtoscano.com and it's not in this metallic uh, metallic paint job, uh, it's not in this metallic paint, just, you know, I think you'd be very happy just because of the sculpt itself and it will look really fantastic. Even if it's in natural colors, it would go very well with the rest of your dragons. So uh, that's it for now, my friends. Another two more months to go before year end. So it's time to really do some reflection and scramble to hit your targets and meet your life goals. Uh, just as I made sure to meet my resolutions of keeping up with this channel and doing re uh, re uh, reviews a bit more regularly. So I think you too can do the same for your resolutions as well. Take care now, guys.